guys, I'm Lisa Potter Dixon, and I'm so excited to be kicking off the Sheer Lux My Life in Beauty Success Story, sponsored by Space NK, with a woman whose story is going to inspire all of us. It is the amazing Anastasia Soiree of Anastasia Beverly Hills fame. Uh, oh, I'm so excited you. to be with you. I am so excited to be here. London. I love London. Yeah, it's a great place. We've been so talking good. about how we both have a love for partying, which is <laughs> always <laughs> fun. <laughs> Work hard and party hard. Absolutely. <laughs> that is what life no, should no, be about. Exactly. Yeah. Not half away. Completely. Mm. So uh, this story of yours, I mean, it really is incredible. And I'm sure you never get bored of telling it because ultimately it is a huge success story. And I suppose we have to start the salt story with brows. Yes. Because you are the brow queen. You're the <laughs> reason that brows were put on the radar I mean, in my opinion, obviously as a makeup artist, we un I've always understood the importance of brows, yes. but not everyone did. So should we start from the beginning? How did that begin? Well, so number one, thank you so much for having me. Number two, um, I like to share my story for a few reasons. I'm really proud of what I built, but most importantly, I want to share this to kind of give that, that kick to every woman that wants to do something has a passion for something and could be beauty or could be anything else to not be afraid to go and do it don't listen if you believe in your dream go and do it yes. so that's why i want to share my story because i had a dream i believed in something when in the early 90s when nobody believed in eyebrows mm -hmm. i was able to pursue this and really work hard in it, it wasn't easy I have to say it's not easy, but uh, it's so amazing to to do what you love. Oh, completely. I feel like that is what life is about. Yes. So you were originally born in Romania. I was born in Romania. Yeah. I emigrated in the end of uh, 1989. Uh, and uh, I, because I didn't speak the language, mm -hmm. I went uh, to beauty school and um, was kind of the only job that didn't require perfect English. Um, and uh, I started doing facial and body waxing, and I was kind of surprised that being in Hollywood, nobody paid attention to eyebrows in the early 90s. Mm. And I remember I studied in my art classes, um, the Leonardo da Vinci theory that he applied in all he studied of the human body, and especially the face, of how the, the body and the face is in a great proportion. And my art teacher always said, if you want to draw a portrait and you want to change an emotion, eyebrow is the most important element wow. on our face. So um, I thought, wow, yeah, actually, I'm a victim of the late 70s, <laughs> early 90s, pencil thin eyebrow. When I went to United States, my eyebrow was pencil thin and round. And I realized I kind of look surprised in all the pictures. Yeah. So I thought, I'm going to go to the library and study this technique, apply it to the eyebrows, and uh, I need to figure out what is the best shape for my bone structure in natural eyebrow. And I start develop. I, I fix my own eyebrows, and my clients used to come and say, "Wow, you 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 look so rested. What did you do? Did you change your hair color, your haircut? Something is different about you. It's so good." And because nobody thought of eyebrows yeah. in the 90s. So I start sharing with them and I start shaping their eyebrows. And um, I, I rented a tiny little room and I wanted really to do this because the owner of the, the salon that I was working, they really didn't believe that eyebrow should be a service. And I really, where are they now? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I really believed in that. Yeah. And um, I thought that this is, this is science where you, you know, science meet beauty. And it's a, something that was proved, I mean, for a century that golden ratio is everywhere. So what this uh, well-shaped eyebrow does brings a lot of uh, balance and proportion yeah. within your face. So you look at somebody and doesn't need to have the perfect features, but because everything is in balance, uh, you you are attracted. So the same uh, technique or theory I apply to the rest of the makeup when we start uh, developing because I always thought of my art classes 
when you get a piece of paper and you start using the pencil to to shade, you create eyes, you create noses, cheekbones, yeah. lips. So I start asking my daughter and, and all the people that I work in, including myself, why we use makeup? And I will ask, why do you use makeup? And you, you will ask, most of the time people will answer, well, I saw my mother applying or I saw this makeup artist that I liked the way I looked. And the, the deep answer is we use eyeshadow to uh, using dark color and light color. And you use dark color to minimize certain feature yeah. of your face and light color to emphasize certain mm -hmm. uh, feature. So by doing that correctly, applying the dark and the light and blend well, you create the perfect balance, an illusion of perfection within your face. And I think it's really interesting that you started this whole process through art school because yeah. I think, you know, it, it's so true. And I think probably a lot of people out there wouldn't really necessarily think about that link, but you're completely right. Obviously the shadowing, the highlighting, yes. the difference it makes, yes. we're now just doing it on our faces rather right. than on paper. Yes, yes. So going from that salon where the owner of the salon didn't yes. believe you, but your clients were obviously starting to spread the word. Correct. Was that literally how it then began and you started to see the ball rolling because the word was being spread? Yes, it's exactly what happened. Um, my clients, of course, I was working with celebrity that they validated my work, but everyday clients, they would come every three weeks to get their eyebrows done and kind of gave me the confidence that, you know, they are the ones that if they come back, they believe in what I'm doing. It's, it's something that changes their appearance mm -hmm. and it's something there that I believe in it. They believe it. So I'm going to go there. Even if the landlord that I wanted to rent the room <laughs> didn't believe in it. My clients and my celebrity clients gave me that confidence that I have to keep doing because it's some, it's a magic. It's the feeling as well. Like you of were course. saying earlier, you know, I think that what we now know, thanks to you, is that the power of the brow, as you were just mentioning, sure. the way it opens your eyes, the way it balances your face, the way it makes you look younger. Yeah, you look like yeah. you have a facelift. Yeah, you know? exactly. But without all yeah. of the, all the of surgery. The yes. <laughs> yeah. It's a natural way of yeah. uh, creating that illusion of perfection, of lifting or whatever yeah. you want to create. And then talking about the product. So yes. when did the product come? So we, you've got your clients. Yes. How did you, sorry, firstly go about getting the celebrity clients? Was that just word of mouth or did you just go yeah. out there and build relationships? Word of mouth. And f at the beginning, mm. if you think about it, in early 90s, mm. uh, there were not too many salons in Beverly mm. Hills. People don't know that. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, you, I mean, I had a lot of celebrity clients mm. from the beginning. And if you remember in early 90s, I mean, you are too young to... Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But... <laughs> 41, it's the brows, you see. <laughs> yes. Uh, in the early 90s, uh, the supermodels yeah, were the cover of every single mm -hmm. magazine. They were mm -hmm. so gorgeous. And I was working with Naomi Campbell, mm -hmm. uh, Cindy Crawford, St Stephanie Seymour, Gail Elliott. So they were so gorgeous and beautiful. And I, I realized that this is this is what is so important and um i moved i rented a, a little room first in a salon and then in 97 i opened the salon because i i was so busy and i couldn't do it i thought i'm going to hire somebody to do facial and body waxing and i will focus only on, on eyebrows because it was worth of mouth the the uh, beauty editors they were the first to embrace the idea they saw it they start believing in it because yeah. once you get your eyebrows done, you understand completely, definitely. You totally. Yeah. It's such an instant change yeah. that you cannot not believe in it. Yeah. And I was working with um, Michelle Pfeiffer, Faye Dunaway, a lot of celebrity clients. A lot of time, there were women that they over twist their eyebrows. And I used to mix some aloe vera with eyeshadow and Vaseline to create this pomade because there were no products. And uh, they will come back, my clients, for their next visit. And they will say, well, when I leave your place, my eyebrow looks perfect. But after I take a shower, I need that product yeah. that you use to make it perfect. So I went to Italy and I decided to start a, a, a product line. And this is how it happened. That's incredible, isn't it? That's just a, what an amazing yes. story from the beginning. And was the first product the dip brow? 
Was that the first? Um, I launch a lot of products. So I launched the brow powders, the brushes, the like the for instance the duo ended brush for the seven B. Um, I went to it didn't exist that brush. So I went to a manufacturer and I said, I want this incline, I want this this way. And first was without the spoolie brush on the other side. And I, I because I had so many clients, I every move was important for mm -hmm. me to be short and I couldn't apply it and then put the brush and get the spoolie. So I went to manufacturer, I said, can you do a spoolie on the other side? So I will just flip, I don't need to waste a few seconds to go. <laughs> and shorten my time. And uh, I created that 7B we do end it. I didn't know that you could patent that. Now it's everywhere. Now it's everywhere. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> you that you imitation the is the for, the first the most beautiful form of flattery. Of course. So, yes, I'm I'm happy that it inspires some other uh, oh, companies and products. So many. And obviously now the great thing is is we can get your products everywhere because then obviously you couldn't and you've yes. got the likes of Space NK as the retailers in yes. the UK, which is wonderful. You know, wonderful. Oh, it's a wonderful space. It's a great space because you've got experts in there that are educating the customer yes. as well with your beliefs and your techniques. For sure it was very important actually from the beginning because in the early nineties and even now you Everything about makeup, it's a lot easier. You could do a, your mascara, you could do your lips, you mm -hmm. could do your blush. Eyebrows, it's still challenging. So from the beginning, it was important to create that and to educate the consumer. And I'm lucky enough to have retailers such as Space and K that they have educated people, their makeup artists that will teach you exactly how to apply the product and where your eyebrow should be placed. Yeah, and it's the exact reason why you created that product because Correct. you created the mix of it. Exactly. And you wanted your customers to be able to go home and do that themselves. Exactly. They're still going to come back to you because they can't do what you no, do. For sure, for yeah. sure. And I always advise clients to do, you, you get one product, don't expect that you, you need to go out and you put it in five minutes before mm -hmm. because you need to try that prolax you need to practice take 20 minutes in your day off should be your me time and practice that product and see how it applies how much pressure you have to put uh, uh what this product does for you you know what yeah. i mean yeah so i always encourage women that uh, you have to try it and practice i mean it took me many years to learn Perfect. how to do it yes <laughs> So I think everybody needs to do it. Even a make if you even if you are a professional makeup mm -hmm. artist, you still try a product and you want to see how it performs. Yeah, of course. Yes. And if you're talking to people out there doing their brows, if you were to say, right, this is where you should start on the brow, would you say at the arch? Would you say at well, the Well, the best way is that for everyone, you are in front of your mirror and you have to to figure out where your eyebrow should begin mm -hmm. and then where is the highest part. Yeah. And I developed this technique in early 90s and it works for everyone. Doesn't matter what face shape you have, what natural eyebrow you have. So the eyebrow always should start above middle of inside of the nostril. Then this line from outside corner of the nose, corner of the eyes, the eyebrow end mm -hmm. should be here. And tip of your nose, middle of the iris, right here this imaginary three lines where they meet they should be have the beginning the highest arch and the end of the eyebrows so once you have that i created stencils and you could do that filling them in with the powder you kind of get an idea of the shape that you're supposed to have you pick uh, a stencil that is one shape thicker than your own eyebrow. If you are over tweezed, mm -hmm. if your eyebrow is wild, you pick one sh shape thinner than your eyebrows. So you fill them in and you will have a guideline. You know, you yeah. need to use it a few times and then you know exactly how your eyebrow. In the same time, you could go on our social media. We have so many videos on Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, that step by step you will learn how to do it you could play that video over and over and you do your eyebrows in the mirror and once you've got it you've got it you've got you've it you've got it yes. you've got it yes. i've got to talk about one of my favorite products yes. because what? i'm also just so happy that it's now in a tube the brow freeze oh my god the yes. brow freeze for me so obviously i have very coarse brows and yes. uh, you know doing red carpet makeup and all sorts of, of makeup 
having the brows stay in place, I used to have to, you know, spray hairspray yes. onto a spoolie and then yes. and there was never a product that could keep it in place until that baby came out. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was agree like, with yes, you. Yes, it's yes, just yes. amazing. It's so yeah, I mean, obviously that was later down the line of the brow products that came out yes. after the colour products. Yes. Obviously the demand was there. Is that the reason you bought it out? I think we've got one of them in the, um, yes. in the tube here. I have to say... And I, I will go back to before the COVID, mm -hmm. the lockdown uh, on social media was very popular and actually started in London, makeup artists. By the way, I want to say that London, UK has the best makeup artists and hairstylists. I always okay. say that even in Hollywood, mm -hmm. when I find somebody and I know I would like it and I ask them where are they or where they went to school, everybody is from UK. <laughs> I don't know what... What you guys have here? Oh, well, thank you. But, we'll take it. <laughs> but uh, uh, the, the most amazing uh, makeup artist, and um, it started with uh, before COVID. It started with um, uh, soap, uh, the laminated yes, yes. look with so soap mixed with water. Well, that looked good for a little bit. When the water start evaporating, you will got flakes and yeah. didn't hold the eyebrow perfectly, and. We looked at my daughter and I thought, like, let's try and create a product that yeah. is going to do that. So we created the, the Brow Freeze, the original one. It's almost like a pomade. Mm -hmm. And it was great with the applicator and it, it sold out. And yeah, it was amazing, a huge success. Uh, of course, we always want to listen what the customer wants. So we read comments every time when we post something on our Instagram and social media. So what people were saying like, well, this, I love this is great, but can we make it easier and easier for, and then again, we sat down and we decide, okay, let's do something in this uh, easy where you have the applicator and the product in. So we created the brow freeze. Uh, it was very important, the tool, because I wanted this uh, applicator to perform as well as the spatula. Mm -hmm. So we wanted a spatula, but the wiper is round. The spatula, oh, the spatula yeah. is flat here yeah. and with bristle, longer bristle here and shorter yeah. here. So when you take this out, the key of perfect application is to clean very well the flat part because it's a load of the product, yeah. it's too much product, and you clean the long um, bristles. Uh, bristles. Yeah. Okay. Then you start. And Come on, put some on me. Come on. This, yes. <laughs> this should. Do you have already? No, I've got nothing on. Brava. This should be the last step. You fill in your eyebrow. You do your makeup because in three minutes this will dry and eyebrow doesn't move. So you start from the highest part always. You brush it up. Oh my God, you have the perfect eyebrows for this product. Okay, that's why I love yeah. it. Uh -huh. And you you do it slowly. You don't need to rush. Now you go with the small one to separate. So my eyebrow grows down at the end. So this is the only thing that after a few seconds, I hold it. Mm -hmm. Your eyebrow doesn't do that, but I hold it and I want to make sure that it stays like that. When you do this, you see the, um, the area where you are missing little hair because yeah, you yeah. over tweeze a little bit. We all did. Don't feel bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it instantly, if it's just, I don't know if you guys can get close and see the yeah. difference there, but like yeah. the difference between the two eyes, mm -hmm. the lift. Yes. You get a brow lift. That's amazing. I mean, I just think that thank you to you and your team for all the education that you've given women as well, because I feel like the confidence that women have with their brows now oh, is, you know, mainly down to you and your team. And I think that's amazing. Um, but what's really exciting, interesting to me is the makeup side of things yes. as well. That must have been a natural move. But was it a little bit scary? Because you're going from brows, which is something that you're a specialist in. So then going to something and to make up which you love. Yes. How how did that feel? So my daughter came to me when in 2012 and she said, Mom, we are traveling because we were traveling around the uh, United States to go to stores to like we do in space and cave, yeah. but I don't need to go there. We have amazing people that yeah. are trained and they will teach you how to do it. We used to do that. 
And she said, I'm exhausted. We work seven days a week. Let's do um, jump on this app called Instagram that <laughs> we could post videos and, and pictures and maybe we don't need to travel that much. Uh, well, I really didn't believe that much into, but I we posted one. I said, okay, let's try it. We posted one um, uh, video and a picture of the Browies, which is our bestseller. And we start getting like 2,000 likes, I think, and comments and every and, and I read, of course, we went through everything. And one comment was saying, oh, I wish I could buy this. Uh, and I and I answered, I said, send me your address and I will ship you one uh, Browies. <laughs> and she said, no, you can't because I live in a small little village in India. And I thought like, oh my God, <laughs> Wow! I will ne- the power of, of this yeah. app is yeah. incredible because I will never be able to reach a customer mm-hmm. in a small village in India. And I really believed in that. So we really po- start posting and we're the first uh, beauty brand that had a huge presence on Instagram. Yes. And by 2014, we were like on top of the, of the world with Instagram. And my daughter came to me and I'm like, mom, we, we were working in more products and especially contouring because from the same base that I start with the golden ratio with eyebrows, contouring is as well to, to contour a face. You need to understand the bone structure and how you minimize certain feature of your face. Mm-hmm. So she said, mom, I know the contouring existed in all the makeup artists in Hollywood, professional. Like Kevin Aquan, who used to do all of that. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. But the everyday consumer really wasn't aware of how important uh, contouring is. So she made a contour kit with dark color and light color, highlighting and contouring. And uh, we posted on Instagram and we start selling on our website and we sold out in within hours. Then we sent to Sephora on their website as well. They send it, they sold it immediately. And of course that kind of gave us the confidence that the consumer wants to learn Mm -hmm. and it's ready for us to bring more products that we will use education to kind of teach them that you don't need, because before I remember, even with eyebrows, I used to have clients that they would come with a picture of celebrity and like, I want this eyebrows. Well, I want Jennifer Lopez eyebrows too, but I don't <laughs> have her natural yeah. eyebrow and her bone structure, yeah. okay? We well. need to do something that is the best for you. Yes. So makeup is the same. You can't do contouring that somebody that you, uh, would. Yeah, you can. You have to do something for you. And uh, that gave us uh, the confidence and we start working on the on the makeup. And we launched with the help of Instagram uh, promoting the, the product. It was a huge success. Well, I think that, you know, the promotion <laughs> side of it, uh, I think Instagram were very lucky to have the fact that, you know, you guys were savvy about that. But yes. also the fact that you say the education process. I think that now because of the power of Instagram, Anyone can be good at their makeup. Anyone can be sure. good at their brows once they've given themselves that time to learn, like you were saying earlier about, yes. about the brows. It's, yes. it's so important. No, you watch the video. This is the customer, what they did. Yeah. They watch videos, not only mine and everybody else, their followers, the people that they followed, and they practice and they start learning doing makeup. Yeah. It's amazing. I remember before this craziness with Instagram, this wave, People, even in Hollywood, they used to get their makeup done if they went to an award season or a wedding or a big party, okay? Now, it is no way you get out of your house without you having your makeup done. You've got your glam rooms in your house. No way. Yes, it's really amazing. And everybody practice. This is how you become an artist. It is amazing. So talking about the best-selling products, we know the Brow Wiz is still your global bestseller, right? So in the UK, because we're mentioning earlier that we, you know, I think we look at makeup maybe slightly different than other parts of the world. Yes. What's your bestseller in Space NK? Like what are your best selling products over here? The brow is still still the best one. Brow definer it's yeah. really uh that type of pencil that in five minutes you are out of the door. You have mm-hmm. three kids, you need to send them to school in the morning. Yeah. And you still want to fix your eyebrows. Brow definer is the best one. Um brow freeze is still amazing because people want to give structure and fullness with the brow freeze, the original one, the pomade, yeah. and then 
at the end with the uh, uh, the new brow freeze uh, gel. Um, as well, our lip liners are oh, absolutely so incredible. The undertones of them are so so good, brilliant. Oh, I'm so happy because I think that a lot of the time with lip liners, and for you guys, like if you if you don't notice, a lot of the time with the lip liners, they can either be too brown or you know just they haven't got Top the right energy. Yeah, to exactly. It. Yes. Yeah. So these, I think that whatever your lip color, you can find one to perfectly match. So great. Yeah. And divine. then we just launched our new uh, lip velvet. I haven't seen these. Oh, you please. I love the packaging. The packaging is great. Yes, I feel of these. Um, yeah. So. This is um, uh, well, a lip velvet. It's almost like, like a, a mousse. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And the beauty of this kind of blurs your lips. Yeah. You'll not see if you have any line. Wow. It lasts for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I eat my lipstick very quickly. <laughs> yeah. Not this one. It lasts for a very long time. And I like to use it with the different lip liners, the same lip, lipstick, I mean, lip velvet. So it change, okay. yeah, no, yeah. changes the color. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah. So, I love this color that you've got. It's more like a pinky color. This is, this is Kiss. This, this is my gorgeous. favorite. Yes. Yeah, that's really gorgeous. Yes. My favorite is to use this. Mm. You use this as, um, um, as your liner. A liner, but it's almost contours your yeah, lips. Shadows it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And then you go over with this. Yeah, yeah exactly. Change. It's yeah. gorgeous. Really nice. Gorgeous. Have you got a favorite launch? What's been your, I mean, what is your favorite oh, you ever launch? Can we, we say? No. <laughs> we work with so we we work on so many products all the time, me and my yeah. daughter. And maybe 50 at the same time but if we are not 100 percent in love we don't launch a product it's yeah so uh, it is no point of launching something just because no, no we we need to really feel like the, the client is excited uh, loves what we we do and and if sometimes we we uh, we launch a product and we'll see we'll hear the voice of a customer and we adjust slightly whatever they feel like they want because i think customers and always are the best and do you know there's so many brands out there that still don't listen to their customers so that is really That's key. key back to entrepreneurship yes um do you feel like there's an expectation to constantly level up or do something new uh, i suppose that you know what you're saying there is that you're not going to launch something now because it's a trend or anything like that you know you're doing it because yes. it's right for the customer but it would be really interesting to hear your initial intention for the brand and how it's evolved over the years. My initial uh, intention for this brand was to bring a product that they will achieve the look that they want at home mm -hmm. because I was able to do it in the salon and I wasn't everywhere. The customer base was spread all over the world. So I wanted to offer them something to really work on every type, any skin type, any type of the eyebrows, the yeah. hair texture and everything. So it was an authentic desire to offer my clients the best quality products that they would perform excellent. Then when we start with the makeup was exactly the same. We love to listen to the voice of the customers because we, we want to know what they want. Mm -hmm what they want, what they wish. And sometimes we want to, to bring something that they don't even know they want or they need, but they will love it when we launch. But we listen to our customer. We make products for them. Yeah, of course, because they're the ones buying it and yes. they're the ones using yes. it. Does it still make you feel, you know, even after all these years, it's 25 years now, is it, since the, yes. the brand launch? Does it still make you feel when someone, I'm sure, stops you in the street or oh. messages you and says, you know, you really have impacted the way I feel about myself? No, this is the best compliment. The best. I feel like, okay, I'm not tired. I could start all over again. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm working like yeah. that. And I, I love, I love, and I work really hard, but I I love what I do because I could go to a party and introduce myself like, oh my God, I use your pencil. <laughs> yes. This is the best thing. When I was 12, my mom to you know, yeah. stories like that. I love it. I love to hear that. And it's it the must, best oh, compliment. Of course. The best. And it must be amazing as well, thinking that when you were with all of those celebrities, like all the celebrities now, you know, from a makeup artist's point of view, having, you know, obviously in my kit, it's all your brow products, having them and then we're passing them and using them on to clients and it's kind of just a full circle of how you began, really. You started with 
your clients and yes. now you've passed on that love, that knowledge, that product to so, so many. This is what I always, and when I start working with my daughter, this is what I explain to my daughter. The most important thing for us, for me, is to offer the best product, the best product, because it's so easy when you believe in this product, yeah. it's so easy to get everyone around who on this product. Mm. I, you want, you, you find a good product, you want to tell your best friend, you want to tell your mother, your daughter, your everyone, because it's such a joy. And women, I think they want to share each other. And if you are a makeup artist, you want your client mm -hmm. to, it's almost like a way of sharing that love with the people that you want to empower them. Because I think that what makes you beautiful makes you powerful. Yeah. A woman that is made up and she loves the way she looks, she feels powerful. Yeah, exactly. She feels good. She feels good. Yeah. Well, thank you for bringing that to so many people's lives. Oh, it's um, my pleasure. You know, it really is such an inspiring story. Like you said at the beginning, which I was really just stuck with me mm -hmm. is, you know, if you believe in something, don't take no for an answer. Don't. Do it. It. Yes. And just if you believe in it, everyone else will end up believing in it too. For sure. But in the same time, what I want to say to everyone out there that is a makeup artist or whatever other jobs they want to pursue in life, uh, believe in yourself. Yeah. Don't let anyone stop you. But start with the, something in mind that this is not going to be an easy road. Yeah. It's not easy. <laughs> but as long as you love you will feel like you don't work a day in your life. Mm. You need to love it. Otherwise, it's very difficult to, to go to the finish line. And I agree with yeah. that. And I feel like that's something that we should all live by. Yes. Um, so thank you so much for that. And thank you to everyone listening and watching. Uh, thank you for Space NK for sponsoring. Obviously, you can yes. get Anastasia Beverly Hills products there, which is really exciting. And do go into the store and speak to their experts and see and let them pick your shades and educate you. Yeah. Um, but also, as Anastasia said, there's lots of videos that you can also watch if you can't get to a yes. store. It's been a pleasure. Enjoy your time in London. Thank you. I'm thank gonna get you. to even out my brows now because I <laughs> feel a bit wonky. Yes. <laughs> but thank, thank you for being you. so inspiring and for just bringing great brows and great makeup to all of us. Thank you very thank much. You so much. Keep your eyebrows beautiful. <laughs> Don't over tweeze your eyebrows. <laughs> you had I'm it a here. mommy. I'm a mommy right now. <laughs> you know, remember. Keep yes. partying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cheers. <you>. Cheers to that. <laughs>